sunlight in a habitat, for example a cave, then it means there'll be no plants. This really affects the type of community that this habitat can support. Light intensity is one factor that affects communities, and today we're learning about 10 others. Abiotic factors are the non-living factors which can affect a community. There are lots in this diagram. I want you to take a moment to pause the video and see how many you can spot. Ready? First up is light intensity. Plants require light for photosynthesis, so where it is dark, plant growth is limited, which of course will affect the rest of the community. Next is moisture levels. These are really important for all organisms as all life needs water to survive. The desert is really dry, as it doesn't rain very often, so there are much fewer organisms living there. Some insects, like slugs for example, need really moist environments too. Wind intensity and direction can affect the ability of plants to grow and anchor their roots, as well as affecting smaller organisms. Did you spot this one? Carbon dioxide levels affect plants, as it's a reactant for photosynthesis. And occasionally, it can affect animals like mosquitoes that detect their prey by high carbon dioxide levels. Maybe you spotted this one too. Oxygen levels affect aquatic animals like fish that use it to respire. The pH of soil and its mineral content affects plants. Some plants don't survive in very acidic or alkaline environments, and of course all plants need minerals to survive. Temperature affects many organisms, as most live within a small range of temperatures. This is why climate change is having such a severe and drastic effect on species all around the world. Now we'll look at biotic factors. These are the living factors that affect communities. Why not do the same thing and pause the video and see how many biotic factors you can now spot. Ready? Here we've got a new predator. These can really disrupt a community, and they can even cause extinction. Availability of food is also really important, as without adequate food, populations can starve to death. New pathogens can also devastate populations, if they have no immunity to it. And finally, one species outcompeting another can cause numbers to decrease to the point where they are no longer sufficient to breed. You can see this bird has got loads of worms, while this bird has none. Woo. Notice that three of these biotic factors are the same as three of the five reasons for species extinction. Can you remember the other two? I recommend making a mnemonic to learn all of the biotic and abiotic factors that affect communities. This is a really good way to help you revise. The specification says that you need to be able to explain how a change in either abiotic or biotic factors would affect a community when you're given data or context. So that's what this question will focus on. Okay, so it says that the table below shows the tolerances of different plant species to levels of water. So we've got three different species, cactus, fern, and brambles. And then their daily intake of water is just low, medium, or high. Not a great table. Normally we get some units and a little bit more data to work with. But anyway, the question says, describe the potential impact of a flood in the areas where these plants live and explain potential impacts on the wider community. So it's a bit of a two-part question. Why don't you pause the video and have a go at answering it before pressing play? It's important to discuss each plant, so we'll group them, starting with the low daily intake of water plants, which is just the cactus, and then the high daily intake of water plants, which is the fern and brambles. Okay, so starting with the cactus. The numbers of cacti would drastically decrease as they tolerate low levels of water. This could result in reduction of other species population sizes as their food source or shelter, etc., is reduced. Now the fern and brambles. Fern and bramble numbers may increase as they tolerate high levels of water. This could result in an increase in other species population sizes. Again, because their food source, shelter, or even breeding ground has increased. It's important that you do mention that bit. That's the explanation of why the changes to the plants would affect the wider community. So get those words in your answer. So, how did you do? Communities are full of struggle for food and meats and more. 
find out about competition in my next video, and please subscribe for more help. Thanks and bye!